Intuitive Art Freedom to Paint are the workshops that I run. I've been running these for about three or four years now and my major focus is to encourage people to use techniques to free up as much as possible and not to worry too much about making mistakes because mistakes can actually often be the way that people start working in a very different way or a new way or a creative way so I consider them helpful. So my painting is very much based on the techniques that I teach in Intuitive Art Freedom to Paint. All the paintings that you see around the studio, you see in galleries or anywhere on my website are all painted with the techniques that I like to use which are rollers, big paint brushes, sprays, uh, mixed media so I like to use a bit of collage, uh, I use sand quite a lot mixed up with paint, uh, masking tape is a favourite of mine and I love just squirting paint onto the canvas um, and just seeing what happens really. I tend to refine the paintings, I don't just sort of make lots of splodges and just hope for the best, I tend to refine them so after I've enjoyed myself painting a bit chaotically I'll tend to pull the painting together a little bit but while I'm looking at the painting I'm, I'm getting into the zone so I'm sort of relaxing and trying to not work too hard. One of the big things about the way I like to paint is that it's not about using too much intellect, it's more about looking and feeling and sensing. It's a bit cliche to say that the painting paints itself and you respond to it, but I think there is a certain amount of that in it. The reason that I use intuitive art freedom to paint as well-being and art, working with people with mental health problems, is because it's incredibly good for raising people's self-confidence and for encouraging them to relax about creating because most people have been told in the past that their paintings are rubbish or that they can't create uh, and I want to set that agenda straight by saying to people you can actually create it's not difficult there are a few techniques that you can use and work with them and keep going and you will see results I think people think I can't paint because the first thing they do doesn't match up to their expectations but the answer to that is you don't get on a bike and expect to be able to cycle the first time you do that, do you? So the beauty of using art in art and well-being is that it gives a platform for expression where words fail. There's interest now from some companies and corporations to invite us to run our workshops within big business as they are now realising that actually this is a very good way of looking after people in the workforce's mental health. So that will be a very exciting new workshop to run soon. I don't really see myself as a teacher so much as a mentor. People that come to the workshops often have a love of art already and will have been painting in different ways or drawing in different ways, although I do get people who've never painted before. I think the idea is really to encourage people to find their own direction and to run with it. So it's not to do a carbon copy painting of something in the workshop. It's to find their own interest and I will encourage them to run with that and to see what happens. And that's the exciting bit. Everybody paints differently. So one of my favourite quotes by Picasso, I'll paraphrase it because I don't remember the whole thing, but it's something like, and the reference is obviously to looking at art that you don't understand necessarily, and he says, you don't understand what birds sing, but you listen to them anyway. And it's a bit like that with art, we need to look more. So although I've paraphrased him, the idea is that just because you don't understand something, doesn't mean it doesn't have a beauty all of its own and that's the sort of thing I want to encourage when people paint is to enjoy creating, enjoy the results and look at it and think I've done that and it's worth something. <laughs>